I genuinely don't know. What should I expect there? That's not good. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Ow. Oh, there's a lot more of them. Wow, there's a lot more of them. Yum, 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 yum. There we go. There we go. Nice and clean. And I'm all healed up now, so we're good. Yeah! One way to cover the ground. You alright? He's, he's, uh... He's not alright. Spoilers. Somebody give me handles. I need to get a handle on the situation so I can upgrade my handles. Who knew that simple handles would be so hard to come by? Quarantine influenza. I believe that's the usual notice. Stay at home. Influenza. I get so familiar with just the term flu that I have to double take whenever I hear influenza in its full form and remind myself that, oh yeah, right, right, that's just the flu. Influenza makes it sound way worse. Calling it influenza feels more right during historical times where it was a huge problem than the, the usual disease that people face during, like, flu season where it's largely an annoyance. Can I go in there, or... nope. Can't go that way. Friendly. Is it? Is that the? Is that the sun that's at the cemetery? Probably. Hey, you have an air of insufferableness about you. Good evening, sir. I'm Doctor Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. More like the seeker of truth becomes a disease vector. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, Doctor, and my family despises me. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear Doctor. I did kick ass in the next room over, which you might have heard. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy, but the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Peaceful? 
That's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic. And very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Wow, yeah, it's great how it's so peaceful and quiet. Did you hear the screaming monsters from next door? I find it really alarming how many, like, monsters there are, like, that one gate away from all of these NPCs. And he's like, ah, it's so peaceful now with all the people gone. I'm like, did you hear the screaming, shrieking monsters? Did you not notice them? Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. More like, you mean like... The Whitechapel murders is a really poetic thing to hear about. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir, Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much, and that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But ah, uh, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know? Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles, and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But sorry, no, never heard of her. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. I'll leave you alone, sir. We've got a double dose of the dreaded communism over in Crane's part of the woods, which is probably why she's, uh, maybe why she's trying to do this work for free for the charity work she's doing. Where are supplies coming from though? Is she just stealing them from the church? I mean the, the hospital. Aha. Unlocked from the rear. Wait, he was locked in here? No, he came in here and locked the door behind him. Right. What's up with that? A small flower bouquet with a voucher for free medical checkup hidden between the flowers. The same voucher we saw before. They put it in flowers. In flower deliveries. To spread the word. Unlocked. Or wasn't locked in the first place. Are you the silent woman? Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. Oh. 
I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm, a stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Level five. She's even impossible to consume. 5,000 XP and it's already ready, of course. Very well. Goodbye then. Every part about her is pretty stubborn. And unhelpful. Go figure. Hey, another one. And now to inspect that? Oh, there we go. What? How are we doing on secrets of yours? Not all of them. Not even all, many of them. Give away drugs and medicine for free. They were resistant to their homeland. Oh, she's only level two. These two are both six. I thought, they were, I thought they were a bigger deal. Huh. I guess Whitechapel just doesn't get to have much of a pillar of community. Is this person double sick? Or is just bronchitis that bad? Probably, there's a cold, there's bronchitis. We actually meet a significant... Yeah, we've met a significant percentage of them already. I think Whitechapel just isn't a proper community, so it doesn't have a proper pillar. Because the, uh, the pillars seem to be specifically too high of a mesmerization level for you to actually reach. Darius uh, Petrescu's letter. My dearest, most beloved children, I am so sorry you have not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly to warn you, my children are still living in a country consumed by war. But there is also a war going on here in England. A war against poverty and against injustice. There is a war I in this is a war I intend to fight despite my advanced years. This is why I am writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That, that probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You are grown up now, and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This is one I must make now, to feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me, and remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I am as ever your loving father, Darius Petrescu. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. What are we gonna do, Darius threaten his children? A mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. This is gonna get dark, isn't it? I'm gonna keep poking around a little bit. Might even try out these people's individual missions. Let's loop until I feel like I'm repeating my steps. It's locked. We're all, we're on the flank of the church now. You guys hide anything in here? No. There's our favorite insufferable dude. There's a few of those. But he's our favorite. I don't see anything in this courtyard. Ooh. Hi. Hi. But also... Why? If I remember correctly, I can't jump in this game. I have to fall off of balconies. Which is frustrating because that, that door is locked. And here's my chance to get behind that gate. And now that I'm up here, my character can't jump down, I don't think. 
I need a teleport prompt, and that, that balcony over there doesn't count, I guess? And he won't jump over the fence. A bit frustrating. You are... oh yeah, it's you. You look so pale, my lord. Would you like me to revive you? Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling, but I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor, Dr. Reed. All right then, but be quick, though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. Ah, yes, the safest kind of prostitute, the one that doesn't like doctors or hospitals. Great. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. You can put your own life in danger. That's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? <laughs> if you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania, like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. I find it odd. I found it odd when the poet was talking about taking inspiration from Whitechapel, but didn't even know about Dorothy, when everyone seems to. Just made him seem like he's not doing a very good job, but even looking at this place. Maybe that's why he so flagrantly just says shit like, Oh, it's so nice how quiet it is. I'm like, it's it's both not nice and not quiet right now. We used to be neighbors for Christ's sake. Hello, young man. I'm Dr. Reed, and I would like to ask you a few questions. May I enter, please? Sorry, no, sir. My father does not like people entering our house, you see. Your father is worried about you, boy. He asked me to look for you. So my father actually worries about me then? Okay then. Come on in. I'm a Harry, by the way. 
is their only pain and suffering in this world. And steel. So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Oh boy. How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. Forgive my bluntness, young man. But you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? This place is awful, I agree. But does that not mean your situation can only improve? That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I... I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. Your father and Mr. Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. Yes, I know her. She came here to examine me when I was very sick. She said I should go out more. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? Taking all your shit. Did I just open a safe? Is that my vampire powers? And no one cares when I do it? Damn. Taking all the shit from the sick people. Boop -ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop. Might be able to find something about his father in here. That might be leverage of some sort or something like that. It's locked. Ah. That's not coming open so easily. Professional vampire hunters. It didn't open manually, so let's look for this. It's another pre-win article. If you ever suspect someone to be a vampire, don't try to kill it yourself. You have no chance. Instead, contact me or try to inform a professional vampire killer. These men and women are rare, but they know what to do against these evil creatures. It even seems that some of them are working together under the name the Guard of Prewin, a paramilitary organization dedicated to the eradication of vampires in London. They are your friends. You are not alone. Solutions exist. Be smart. Spread the word. Clarence Crossley. For more information, please contact me directly. So he has a a, pan, a vampire killing 
pamphlet. Dear Mr. Peterson, it is my duty to inform you of our refusal to accept your application for a job at the dockyard. I must thank you for the time spent at our office explaining the difficulty of your situation with your ill boy and the loss of your beloved life, wife, but it is also my duty to point out the policy of our company which expressly removes the employment of former criminals or convicts. Your unfortunate connections with the ill-fated wet boot boys have been duly noted. These, these are hard times, sir, and Finch and Harper intend to re reward first the candidates who pass the small inquiry we like to conduct about our future employees. We have You have my deepest sympathy, and may God be with you and your family. Sincerely, R.D. Harper. We hope everything works out for you, but it won't be with us. Fuck off. What's that? You trying to turn your life around and leave previous criminal elements and move on towards a regular life? Well, we're specifically going to roadblock that. He must have been the third person. Yep. So Joe, Harry, and Barrett. Joe's probably still wandering around. Yep. Time to pay, one way or another. You again. What do you want this time? Why do you keep on working for the gang, Joe? You know it doesn't suit you. It's true, I hate this job. And I know I made some bad choices, but I'm a wet boot boy now, and people won't forget it. You could leave tomorrow. Start another life in another town. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. We are poor. My son's weak, and there's no way he'll endure another disappointment. Harry doesn't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why did you make him come here? I've always put my son's interests above everything else, whatever he may think. Our house is small but affordable. The walls are thin, but the door is solid. You really love your son, don't you, Mr. Peterson? He's my pride and joy. Even if he hates me for the choices I make and pushes me buttons more than he should. Do you have any regrets? Only one. Not to have my beloved wife by my side. She died when Harry was little. My sweet Jane. She gave the boy confidence. Since the criminal nature of your job means you could be arrested, are you not afraid of what would happen to your boy if you were? No one will ever take my son away from me. If that ever occurred, I'd, I'd hunt the bastard down and rip off his head with my bare hands. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. I'll let your guard down, sir. Hey, you don't want him pet street anymore. What if uh, you hired him for your shop, right? Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? What do you know of Harry Peterson? The boy seems so fragile, not like his father at all. Harry's a good boy, but he spends most of his time complaining. He's had it tough, all right, but he needs to grow a pair. What troubles him exactly? Well, despite being his father's son, almost everything, I think. He never wanted to come to Whitechapel in the first place. Hates this place more than most of us. Right then, show me what you have. Did your stock magically reappear? It did not. It did not. Dang it. Not so lucky this time. Let's look into some of the local things. Find someone who can read the braille alphabet one out of four. Very specific. One out of four, I wonder what that refers to exactly. Someone we haven't met yet, apparently. And we were only missing two faces on this list. Have I met them all personally? I feel like I have not met Christina Popa. Oh wait, no, she's no, she's the prostitute. Uh, everyone up there we've met. You met you, both of you, all three of you, I believe. You're tied to Darius, which is specifically important for us. Hmm. Cardigan was the guy that has shitty apartments and everything. 
Yeah, so we're just missing a couple of people before we've filled in this entire map, actually. Making some progress there. It's a low-quality area, though, so if, I f if, if you do feed on anyone, you're probably getting yourself in trouble. Oh, right, the quests. Retrieve Sam uh, Samuel the Disciple in the cemetery. Ah, we haven't met him yet. And Samuel's not tied to him at all? Uh-oh. The fact that Samuel's not on this map tied to him makes me think Samuel might just be dead. It's not very encouraging. I'm sure it'll be fine. Hey, Sammy. Here? Oh, that's the main quest. Right, that's th that's where the head's mapped. You can't fast travel in this game, can you? It's almost back to the hospital. Is the other one closer? Retrieve Barrett Lewis's box. Significantly closer. Enemies abound. Better go home, sir. Better go home, sir. <laughs> oh, he's running. Dang it. And kill, 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 kill. That's why you shouldn't attack me on sight. Oh, wait, I attacked him. <laughs> this time. Oh, look, he's T posed. Oh, he was T posed. <laughs> oh, he was T posed. That's great. Oops, how do I get through here? Uh, oh, back there, there was a, way, a turn in. Specifically resistant to the type of attack I'm good at doing. Good. Oh, well, he's dead now. I guess that works out. Not, not lasting very long, is he? There we go. Clean. We don't have it, do we? Nope, more rings. Good resale value. Ah! A ring... Ah, uh, bracelets average. So rings and bracelets can't be scavenged. You just have to sell them if you want them to be worth anything for you. Okay. I'll be sure to do that next chance I get. I want to miss out on things we might be able to buy. 